For stags, the antlers that they grow will determine where they fit into the hierarchy of the resident population. Their antlers will determine where they get to live and feed and whether they get the opportunity to pass on their gene. Having a well-formed set of antlers will enable them to fight for the right to become the dominant stag in their area. velvet antlered stag was out feeding at 7pm on the 23rd of November. His brow tines are almost fully developed and his main beams are at the junction of where his inners and outer top tines will be formed. He is plucking off individual blackberry leaves and keeps his head held high to protect his new growing set of antlers. Pay particular attention to this stag's right ear and the location of the notch out of the edge as it is a good reference point to what you will see in some upcoming footage. He uses his ears to fend off the insects that are attracted to his antlers that probably have a smell, as there would be free-flowing blood between the velvet and the growing antler. It is important to note that samba stags do not all cast their antlers around the same time of the year, as fallow, red and rooster deer do. It is common to see a freshly cast samba stag at the same time as one with rubbed out hard antlers and another with half grown velvet antlers. At this stage of antler development, the tips will be very soft and pliable, especially on the top of the main beams. The new growth could be easily damaged if they were hit against a hard object like a branch or a tree trunk. For this reason, velvet antler stags tend to shy away from dense cover and are more likely to be found out feeding in more open country. They will also walk away from conflict to avoid antler damage. I have seen a mature samba stag with half-grown velvet antlers being intimidated by a young spiky stag. The spiky lowered his head and advanced towards the velvet antler stag who was feeding on blackberry leaves. The mature stag decided to back off with his head held high to avoid antler damage in a fight. If he had been in hard antler, he wouldn't have backed down or been intimidated by the spiky to the point where he left the feeding area altogether. Antlers are composed of bone and not to be confused with horns that are composed of keratin, which is the same material that our fingernails and toenails are made of. Horns have a living bone in a stem that is attached to the skull from which the horn material grows. Antlers grow out of bony stubs on the deer's head from the tip and are shed each year, whereas horns grow from the base and will continue to grow throughout the life of the animal. Deer are a very unique animal, as they are the only animal in the world that grows living bone outside of their body and then sheds it and grows a new set each year. Depending on the age of the stag, it can take between four to five months to grow a new set with an average being around 145 days from casting to stripping the velvet off. There are two main things that will influence the type and size of a stag's antlers, genetics and food. A stag may have good antler growing genetics, but without good quality food may never reach his full antler growing potential. Likewise, a stag with an abundance of good quality food but poor genetics also will grow poor quality antlers. I believe this next footage to be of the same stag that we're looking at now, four months later. With the frame frozen, the telltale ear notch can be seen in his right ear at the same location as in the previous footage. He was tailgating a hind in season that was holed up in a thick clump of blackberries. He was torn between staying with her or bolting, but she made up his mind for him and she took off in the opposite direction, leaving him stranded. Food is a variable that can change from season to season, so a stag's antlers may be smaller than his last set if he grew them during drought conditions or after a bushfire. Genetics of a stag, on the other hand, is something that will not change during his lifespan. The hind's genetics are equally as important as those of the stag when it comes to antler quality of their offspring. Both the stag and the hind will carry the antler forming genes of their parents as well. Not every stag has the potential to grow a 30 inch plus set of antlers. 
and many stags will max out with a 24 to 25 inch set, no matter how long they live for. Most stags will have reached their full antler growing potential by the time they are eight or nine years old, and their antlers usually start regressing and start going backwards around 10 to 12 years of age. This young button stag is growing his first set of antlers and was videoed on the 23rd of November. The growing bone projecting from his head will form the pedicle the future antlers will be attached to. This young knobby stag has heard movement in the blackberries and sees an animal moving around nearby. It is a fox who also spots the deer and decides to backtrack, avoiding a conflict and keeping out of harm's way. He made his way over and continued to follow the other velvet stag where he went. It is common to see velvet antler stags of different ages hanging around together during their antler growth period. The first set of antlers that a stag will grow will be a set of spikes, ranging in size from 2 to 9 inches. This will depend on his genetics and the quality and abundance of food available. The next set is likely to be a main beam with small brow tines, or on some stags there may even be bumps where the terminal fork for the upper tines will be the following year. Their next set of antlers will usually have six tines, with the outer and inner top tines fully formed. This young stag was filmed on the 11th of April at 6.36pm, and has plenty of potential for future antler development. His tines are showing signs of becoming pointed on the ends, so he is not far off from stripping the velvet off his antlers. This young velvet antlered stag has grown his first set of antlers in casting his spikes. He has ventured far enough out into the feeding area and has picked up my scent wafting down from my tree stand. Whilst he has pinpointed the direction that the scent is coming from and stares up towards my tree stand, he doesn't bolt off or honk to alert the other deer in the vicinity. Rather than crashing off into the thick cover, he carefully makes his way back into shelter so as not to damage his velvet antlers. Most stags that I've watched feeding whilst growing their velvet antler tend to keep their heads held high whilst browsing and seeking out food. I'm sure that they do this to protect the sensitive tips of their growing tines, so they are less likely to come in contact with antler damaging vegetation. This hard antlered stag was videoed on the 15th of September after being sighted in velvet back in June. Note how he has no hesitation at feeding at ground level and is not concerned with his antlers coming in contact with vegetation or being tangled up in the blackberry vines. This hard antlered stag was videoed on the 21st of October at 8.21pm and is a good example of what I would call a cull stag. His right hand antler is clearly deformed 
and is more likely to be a result of genetics rather than from antler damage during the velvet growth period. His main beam hooks backwards and there is only a stub where his brow tine should have grown. His left antler appears to be okay, although it is missing an inner top tine. There is a small knob where it should have grown, so it may have been broken off biting or just didn't grow at all. The fact that he is not limping or there is no visible sign of injury to the left hand side of his body further indicates he is malformed antler are a result of genetics. Seeing a stag with a deformed set of antlers and culling it will help reduce the likelihood of this gene being passed on, but only if the hinds in the area don't carry the same gene as well. In the field, it can be difficult to tell the difference between a stag that has damaged his antlers whilst growing them and a stag that carries a genetic fault in his DNA. A stag that has damaged his antlers whilst in the soft velvet may grow a perfectly good set of antlers the following year. Injuries from fighting or being shot and wounded can also contribute to the quality of antlers that a stag will grow. An animal that sustains a substantial injury to the right hand side of their body will usually grow a weaker antler on the left hand side the next year. This is their body's way of compensating for the need to produce new cells in the damaged area. In areas of low hind numbers, stags that have malformed antlers are less likely to get the opportunity to breed. Whereas where the hind numbers are high, there is a greater chance that a malformed stag will find a receptive hind. This usually occurs whilst the dominant stag is occupied with another hind that is already in season. This velvet antler stag was videoed on the 26th of November at 8.23pm, so I decided to shoot him as a cull and for meat. He was to be the third stag that I have shot with badly malformed right hand antlers in this area. So I set up the video camera on the tripod and waited for him to feed out into the open. He must have laid down in the blackberries as he didn't reappear before it was too dark to see. Oh well, perhaps next time.